Hey everyone, it's time for March Madness. Not basketball. The March Madness I'm talking about is the Federal Reserve's rate policy and how they're coping with inflation, bank closures, and financial market volatility. One of the things my team does is monitor what Wall Street thinks the Fed will do at their next meeting. Will they raise rates? Will it be by 25 basis points, 50, 75 basis points? We've been tracking these movements for a year now. The Fed made their first rate increase of this cycle last year on March 16th. That 25 basis point bump was followed by an increasingly aggressive wave of monetary tightening. In just nine months, the Fed pushed the overnight rate up by four and a quarter percent, and the impact is becoming increasingly evident. We're seeing some of the intended results. The headline inflation rate has come down from 9.1% last June to 6% in February this year. But we're also seeing some consequences that were likely unintended, like the shutdown of Silicon Valley Bank. Fed action can have a profound effect on real estate, financial markets, and as we've recently seen, banks. The Fed's aggressive rate moves hit Silicon Valley Bank on both sides of their balance sheet. In early March, the three-month Treasury was delivering a yield of about 5%. By comparison, the average interest rate on a savings account was about 0.35%. Think about that. You can leave your money in a savings account and get almost nothing, or you could put it into a short-term Treasury and get 5%. If you have a few hundred dollars in your account, this probably doesn't really matter much. But if you have a few hundred million dollars in your account, like a lot of the tech and VC firms that use Silicon Valley Bank, then the interest on that capital could be pretty significant. So that's what a lot of these tech and VC firms did. They moved their money out of Silicon Valley to get a higher interest rate. They took out so much money that the bank had to sell off some of their bonds to cover the withdrawals. And that's where the bank got hit on the other side. The average yield on the treasuries the bank sold was about 1.8%, but the market rate for the 10-year treasury in early March was about 4%. So the bank had to sell the treasuries for a loss. That created a very fast snowball effect that resulted in the bank shutdown. Now, the Fed and the FDIC stepped in almost immediately with new policies to reduce these risks going forward, and contagion is unlikely. As I mentioned earlier, we monitor what Wall Street thinks the Fed will do at its next meeting. And throughout February, since the Fed's last meeting, Wall Street was baking in a 75% to 90% likelihood of a 25 basis point rate increase on March 22nd. Then on March 7th, Chairman Powell spoke to the Senate and said the ultimate level of interest rates is likely to be higher than previously anticipated. Bang! Those words hit the market. Between March 6th and March 8th, the Wall Street bet on a 25 basis point increase fell from about 70% to about 20%, while the bet on a 50 basis point increase went from 30% to 80%. Then Silicon Valley Bank collapsed and by Wednesday, March 15th, the Wall Street bet that the Fed would do a 50 basis point increase went to zero. The market is now down to a coin toss between the Fed keeping the overnight rate flat or raising it by 25 basis points. Think about that. In the span of a week, the likelihood of a 50 basis point rate increase by the Fed went from 30% on March 6th to 80% on March 8th to zero on March 13th. So ironically, the shutdown of Silicon Valley Bank may actually bring more stability to the lending climate. It can slow the Fed down enough to allow lending to restabilize. We still need to navigate the price discovery process and close the buyer-seller expectation gap, and the market will still be bumpy, but that could pave the way to a revival of investment activity. Once again, we're being barraged by a lot of news. But at the end of the day, investors need to consider what will this all mean a year from now, or in three years, or five years? Is this barrage of information about Silicon Valley Bank meaningful, or will it just be a footnote in six months? We need to keep this in perspective, and we need to keep our eyes on the horizon.